the single greatest controversy at the Second Vatican Council, whether Mary should have a separate document or be included in the document of the church. Seems inconsequential, but symbolically it meant a lot and had serious fruits after the council as well. Welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. We're talking about marrying controversies at the Second Vatican Council. I'm reading from The Rhine Flows into the Tiber, a great objective treatment of the blow-by-blow -blow events at the Second Vatican Council. And we just talked about in our previous segment uh, what was taking place in terms of how two sides, two, two sides were clearly being identified. One is the Rhineland side, German, Austria, Switzerland, uh, Scandinavia, uh, Belolux countries, in favor of putting Mary in a chapter of the document on the church for reasons of ecumenism, not emphasizing her too strongly, where you have uh, Tiber countries, Italy, Spain, most of Latin America, most of Africa, Philippines, India, uh, saying, no, no, she has to be honored with a separate document to have the full prerogatives of Our Lady properly recognized. Uh, she could be easily, uh, this could be misunderstood as downplaying the role of Mary. And as the vote is getting closer and there's a dialogue, there's a debate going on, you have two principal debaters. One is Cardinal Koenig of Vienna, who strongly articulates the Rhineland position. No, it'll hurt ecumenism, put her in the document on the church. And then you have uh, Cardinal Santos of the Philippines saying, no, give her her own document, and then you can always properly articulate how she relates to the church, but this will be seen as downplaying Our Lady. In fact, Cardinal Santos uh, asks for more time. This is his statement in front of the Council Fathers, he says, quote, I humbly beg the Cardinal moderators not to allow the vote to be taken on this question immediately, but to grant a suitable amount of time to the Council Fathers for pondering over the matter and giving it prudent consideration. Uh, this request was not followed by uh, the, the Cardinal moderators, many of whom were from the Rhineland countries at this point. Now, where, for example, was a certain Bishop Wojtyla? Where was John Paul II before he was John Paul II, when he was a bishop at the Second Vatican Council? Well, John Paul II, as Bishop Wojtyla, sent a personal letter to the Cardinal Theological Commission guiding this, saying, give Mary a separate document. And he was, he was uh, supported uh, in a later uh, letter by Cardinal Wyszynski and 70 other Eastern European bishops saying, Give her her own document. It's going to be taken to be a de-emphasis. If not, if you don't give her her own document, then you have to put her as chapter 2 in the document on the church right after chapter 1 on Jesus for the same reason, so that she can be seen in light of Jesus Christ, in light of her role in redemption. Sadly, as we'll see, neither suggestion of Bishop Wojtyla was followed by the Council Fathers or by the Coordinating Commission. Uh, there's a later victory, which we'll talk about in terms of the title Mother of the Church, where the Polish bishops were instrumental, uh, but this victory was not to be seen. So John Paul II, as a council father, said, give her her own document. So how does this conclude? Now, note I want to note also that the Eastern Rite um, bishops uh, chimed in here. And remember Father Rahner was saying, this is going to offend the Orientals. This is going to offend the Eastern Rite bishops. The opposite would be the case, that the Eastern Rite bishops were in favor of more of a treatment of Our Lady and a separate document and a treatment of remediation. Uh, on the following day, a letter signed by five Eastern Rite Council Fathers was circulated, pointing out that, quote, among the Orientals united to the Apostolic See, as well as among those separated from it, the Blessed Virgin Mary is very greatly honored and urging the Council Fathers to vote in favor of an independent schema on Our Lady. Well, there's a final interjection by a um, Bishop Grotti uh, from, from Brazil. And this is what Bishop Grotti gets up in front of the Fathers and says. He says, uh, But from the text of the schema, it was clear that Mary was neither above nor against Christ. He added, that abuses in devotion to Mary were not an argument against a separate document, but rather in favor of it, since in a separate schema the truth could be more clearly presented. Bishop Grody then asked, quote, 
Does ecumenism consist in confessing or in hiding the truth? Ought the council to explain Catholic doctrine or the doctrine of our separated brethren? Hiding the truth hurts both us and those separated from us. It hurts us because we appear as hypocrites. It hurts those who are separated from us because it makes them appear weak and capable of being offended by the truth. Bishop Grady concluded his rebuttal with the plea, Let the schemas be separated. Let us profess our faith openly. Let us be the teachers we are in the church by teaching with clarity and not hiding what is true. Powerful words from this bishop. How does it conclude? On October 29th, a vote was taken on the following statement. Does it please the Council Fathers that the schema on the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, should be arranged that it may become Chapter 6 of the schema on the Church? When the votes were counted, there were 1,114 in favor of combining the two schemas. The required majority was only 1,097. Father Rahner and the European Alliance had won by a margin of 17 votes. Now, this leads to what theologians like Cardinal Rotzinger said was a decade without Mary after the Second Vatican Council. Why? Because it was taken, whether or not it was the intention of the fathers, it was taken by much of the Catholic world, especially in the West, that not giving Mary a separate dogma was a purposeful de-emphasis on Our Lady. Putting her at the end of the chapter in the church, for many, was a structural way of saying that's where we should regard her. After we talk about everything else in the church, oh yeah, there's something about Our Lady, but it's not as important. I'm not saying that was the intention of the overall fathers. We know what the intention of the, of the Rhineland theologians were, but again, let's go back to the Holy Spirit protects the church in truth. And in fact, a Protestant Paretus that was... Uh, uh, invited to the council, uh, uh, a theologian named Coleman uh, said, we're very disappointed about how this turned out because for all of our efforts to try to downplay and all our hopes that Mary would be downplayed, the actual text, the actual information, even on things like mediatrics, are as strong as ever. And that signals to us that the Holy Spirit protects ultimately, that the truth comes forward. I'm going to read you that quote from... Uh, from the theologian, the German theologian Coleman, in some of our later series, in this mini series on Mary and the Council. It is also true that newspapers reported that several Council Fathers left this meeting in tears because they had the idea that Our Lady had lost the day. Whether or not Mary should have had her own document or not, it was taken, it was taken as a de-emphasis on Our Lady which led to severe effects after the Council. Now, at the same time, we know that through the efforts of Pope John Paul II, especially his brilliant encyclical Redemptoris Mater, where he goes back to Christological Mariology as the foundation of all ecclesiotypical Mariology, that we then have a new springtime of Our Lady in the Church after this decade, this 10 years without Mary. And of course, even though during those 10 years, we were never without Our Lady because she would not leave us even if there was a misperception of a new de-emphasis on Our Lady. Some uh, commentators said that even though the Rhineland Fathers wanted to de-emphasize Mary in light of the theologies of Karl Rahner and the, the concept of uh, ecumenism over the full truth, in fact, others took it that the document on the church climaxed with Mary as a chapter 8. I'm going to read to you more of the comments that led to the other controversies of the Second Vatican Council, but I want to leave with the fact that the Holy Spirit always wins in the end. And the truth about Our Lady as it's related in the Council is profound, it's beautiful, and even though the Council Father said it's not a complete doctrine, still the treatment on co-redemption, the treatment on mediation and advocacy is profound and beautiful with a beautiful treatment of true ecclesiotypical Mariology. Mary as model to us, the Holy Spirit wins at ecumenical councils. Thanks be to God. This is Dr. Mark Mivali saying thanks for being with us at MaryCast. God bless you.